music and we, we thank the Lord. I would like to welcome you all to church this morning. Is everyone doing good? For some reason, your, what your, your minds have not talked to your faces. <laughs> because you, in your mind you are doing good, but your faces are not showing that, you know. <laughs> okay. Smile a while. I think we need to smile a while. Smile, smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one you love the best. Then shake hands with the ones nearby and greet them with a smile. Smile a while and give. and your faces, they are agreeing. We praise the Lord for that. Yes, I would like to welcome you all to church this morning, and it is just a pleasure for me to be here, and I know it is also a pleasure for you to be there. I'm just checking on our Zoom. We've got uh, 30 gadgets connected today. Three zero of our gadgets are there. Some of them, okay, this one, mine is included in the 30, and some are as near as next door, uh, but the others are as far as, I think, I think I saw Sister Olivia all the way from the Caribbean earlier on. Yeah, so Sister Olivia Aaron, she is there all the way from, is it Dominica? Dominica, she's, uh, she's uh, connected up. So we just want to welcome you all from wherever you're joining us. May the Lord be with you as we fellowship together. I was just blessed to see Sister D and Brother Noel come in here. It has been a while. We praise the Lord. You are looking so well, my sister. Yes, we praise the Lord that you are well enough to be here today with us. Yes, I think we last saw you, was it around October, September, October? September. Wow. So we, we thank the Lord that everything has gone well and you are here today and also with your family. A warm welcome to all our visiting guests today and we pray that the Lord will be with us. I think I've got a PowerPoint up there somewhere. I think if it can come up now, I will be glad. Okay. All right. I will go. What do you have in your hands is our, the, the title of our sermon today and also uh, with the date of today so that you may, you may be worrying, <laughs> yes, what day it is today. <laughs> okay. All right. So every time I get an opportunity to, to preach, uh, I find it a pleasure or an opportunity that I could share with God's people, my brothers and sisters, the word of God. As I say all the time, it's not by accident that we've ended up here today, but it's God who has made it possible that we'll be here and we'll join. I think you've heard about I will go. For some reason here across in this side of the, of the, of the, of the continent, as it were, in Africa, I will go is quite a big thing. People are moving there with t-shirts, so I will go. With hearts, I will go. With whatever, I will go, I will go. And where are they going to go to? The AUGO is the general conference strategic plan for 2020 to 2025. So if anything, we should all be saying, I will go. And where are you going? Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20 reminds us of where we are going. Jesus says here, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority is in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And behold, or, and lo, I am with you always to the very end of age. It is connected with Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, which is our scripture reading for the day. Isaiah, something happens to Isaiah, and then uh, the question, there's something, if you read from, uh, from verse 1, you hear that that was the year that King Ozia died. But there's something that happened now in verse 8. When uh, even that angel had come with a live call and touched the lips of Isaiah, the question came. Uh, and Isaiah then in verse 8, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send 
and who will go for us. And I said, here am I, send me. Let us pray. Our Father, we want to thank you this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us here. May we join Isaiah. May we join all those who came before us to say, I will go. And Lord, you have sent us. You have sent us with this power to say that all power has been given to you in heaven and on earth. Therefore, we go with the power behind us that you only can provide. Be with us as we shall share your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Who will go? Who will go is a question that has been asked. It was asked by none other than Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh started by asking, who is this God that has sent you Moses and Aaron to come to deliver his people? And God came through talking, uh, or came through through plagues, and there were many plagues. How many plagues did we end up with? Ten plagues. But there is a question that uh, uh, Pharaoh asked, okay, 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 you guys, you go, you go. And then they asked, who is going to go? Exodus chapter 10, verse 9, it says, Moses answered and said, we will go with our young. We will go with our old. We will go with our sons. We will go with our daughters. We will go with our flocks. And we will go with our heads. In other words, Moses is saying, everything that is about us, we are going to go. Though for when we are saying, I will go, it's not only Jabu that you are going. It's me. It's my wife. It's my children. All those associated with me. Not only that is it, also my what? My wallet as well. My wallet with the cards. They are going. Where are they going? They are going so that we can sacrifice to the Lord. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, as we go on this journey, let us make sure that every one of us is going. We are all going. In his book, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen Covey identifies the second habit as the habit is called begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. He says that everything is created twice. First of all, you create it in your mind. And then secondly, you create it in real life. He says that Everything is created twice. Create it in your own mind and create it in life. Before a plane takes off, the pilot has to submit the flight plan. Let's say they are flying from Manchester all the way to New York. Before they are allowed on the runway, they have to submit what their plan is what their flight plan is going to be. It is possible that as soon as that plane takes off, there'll be turbulence, there'll be storms, there'll be so many other disturbances, maybe divert the route, but before they set off, they need a what? A flight plan. This is the same that applies to with you, my brothers and sisters today. Because the pilot knows that, no matter which way they are going, their destination is New York. They may be going up here uh, via, okay, yes, when they're coming from Manchester that way, yes, maybe they'll be crossing over into Scotland and all that, but whichever way they are going, they know that the route may change, but they know that their destination is the same. The same applies with you and me. Where are you going? Where are you heading to? May I tell you, may I remind you that there are only two destinations. It's either we are going to heaven or we are going to hell. In other words, you may be listening to this sermon and say, oh, you know what? Uh, I don't know where I'm going, but by the end of this, I hope and pray that we'll all be going one way, and that is the way to, to heaven. Therefore, it is very important that even before you go, got out of your house, before you became a Christian, you should know where are you going as a Christian. 
Because knowing where your destination is, is going to guide which way you are going to travel around this path called life. As we start this brand new year, do you know that it's a question? Do you think that it's a question that we should consider seriously? I think it is. If we have not considered it yet, let us consider the importance of where we are going. Therefore, to start this uh, year and to start on this journey, we have sung so wonderfully about we onward Christian soldiers. You know what soldiers do? One thing, soldiers, you can, they can do anything else, but one thing that is not questionable about soldiers, they follow instructions. Soldiers don't use common sense. If they are told fire, they what? They fire. If they are told stop, they stop. If they are told run, if they are told they lie down, they lie down. The same applies with us. We are calling ourselves Christian soldiers. We have got the marching orders. How are we doing with the marching orders? We are going to heaven, my brothers and sisters. And as we go, we just want to pray and ask that the Lord will be with us today. We are going to talk about what do you have in your hand. This, I think, is a critical question. And it has been asked in, to different people in different circumstances. We'll quickly run through some of those people that have been had this question asked in their lives. I think when you talk about this story, people quickly rush to this gentleman, isn't it? To Moses. We remember in that wilderness when God spoke to Moses through the burning bush. And then Moses was trying to refuse. Let's go to Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says here, but Moses protested and says, what if they don't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? Then the Lord asked him, what is in your hand? And a shepherd's staff, Moses replied. Moses was asked by God. When he said, I can't go, God said, what is in your hand? And he said what was in his hand. Let's go quickly to the next one. I don't know, yes, you are familiar with this story. Elisha is the prophet who is uh, involved with this uh, uh, situation. We have got a lady. There is something that happened to this lady. The husband is dead. And the husband was one of the sons of the prophets. And the husband left a what? A debt. And now there are people who are coming trying to collect money. Now she doesn't have money. And now they are coming for the boys, for the children now. And now there's a situation that we find ourselves in. Let us read what the Bible says here. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It says, the wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried to Elisha, your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. And uh, uh, to take my two boys. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing at all, she said, except for a small jar of olive oil. Mm. This lady also had just a small jar of olive oil. That's all that she had. But the question was, what do you have in your house? Let's look at the third and final example that we are looking at. We know this story, don't we? Yes, which is happening now in, in Zarephath. The prophet this time is Elijah. And Elijah has just been sent by God. God has been taking care of Elijah, but now the brook is run dry. And the ravens which we used to provide him for uh, food uh, are no longer coming. And then God sent him away. And God is sending him to Zarephath. And he, as he sends him, he said, behold, I've, I've asked what? I've sent a widow that will take care of you. Okay. So God is sending. Uh, you, you know, sometimes God, you never know how he, he answers our prayers. For you and me, you would think that it would be easier for God to make sure that the brook continues to what? To provide water and the ravens to continue to, to provide the food. But mm -mm, God is sending a widow. And uh, look at this widow. Is she a rich widow? Uh, 
listen uh, to what uh, uh, um, what happens when Elijah now gets to the to the gate. That is First um, Kings chapter seventeen, verse ten and eleven. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. Okay, it was not firewood, just sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As he was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. And the lady responded and says, I don't have any. Okay, water, yes, we can, we can, we can, we can, uh, yes, we can, we can share the little that I have. But when it comes to the food, I don't have any. There's just a little enough left for what? For myself and son, so that we what? We bake and eat and what? And die. This was the situation. But Elijah says, go and do that. For the Lord has promised that he shall supply your needs and start with me. What do you have in your house? Why does God ask this question? Or his servants ask this question? Does he not know or see what is in my hand or in my house? Why does God ask this question? Can you please talk back to me so that we can uh, interact? Why does God ask this question? Does he know or does he not see what you have in your hand or in your house? Yes, my brother. Okay, to, remi to remind us what is giving us. To remind us what is giving us. Thank you, my brother. Anyone else? Y yes, Elder. Man, okay, everything belongs to God. If he takes something from you, he's going to provide or to replace that. Brother Andrew. Mm. Amen, amen, amen. When we think that we don't have, that's the very thing that what? Sometimes you look at it and say, this is nothing, this. But when God looks at it, Uncle Cyril would like, uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, your brother Mark, if you can. He wants to see what it is you can contribute towards what he's about to multiply. Wow. All right. Wow. Okay. So he's trying to see what he can contribute to for what. Okay. All right. So we, we, we have got that. So in other words, God knows what we have visited. Everything. Everything balanced. He knows what is in our hands. But he wants to ask us that question. I also think that he wants to ask us so that we can acknowledge. Because sometimes as people, we don't count our blessings. We are just complaining or asking, may I have this? May I have this? As a family, at the end of every year, we sit down. We have got a prayer session where we are praying for the children. But we go through all the blessings that the Lord has done for us. Not only, okay, we started this when we were back in Zimbabwe. In our house at that time, I think there were about eight of us, nine of us in the house. And you know what? It's the tradition that we've kept on doing. Such that now, we send the messages out. Yeah, it's coming to an end. What the Lord has done to you. And they send back their, uh, their, their, their thanksgiving. And we were praying. Last night, that's what we were actually doing. Praying for our people. And you know, when you count those blessings, when you name them one by one, you will see that you are rich. That the Lord has blessed you. When you forget a little bit for what the challenges that you are facing, but just looking on what the Lord has done for you. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. I meet some people in, or, on, the, on the prayer line. We've got a pray for me forum. And sometimes when you go there, you say, I want to thank God for everything. Oh, no, my brother, my sister, that's not good enough. Everything, name it. Because the more you name it, the more it sticks into your own mind. The more you appreciate what really God has done. And there are certain things that we think, oh, no, oh, this one is, is, is that. We've got our prayer, prayer, prayer chain led by Petra. Yes, and I know Rosie, Rosie normally points out every morning she wakes up and says, I want to thank God for this. I want to thank God for waking me up. I might not be feeling well, but I want to thank God for this. I want to thank God for this. And it's, it just encourages everyone else to say, let us praise the Lord for what he has done. So God, when he asks this question, he's just asking us, Jabu, acknowledge what I've given you. 
acknowledge what is in your hand. You know, my brothers and sisters, when is this question asked? It is asked when we are we're faced with our own inadequacies. We can't feed ourselves. We are just about to the end. We can't pay our debts like that widow. And Elisha asked, what do you have? And she said, I have nothing except for this small jar of olive oil. When you read that story, you know about it, isn't it? How much did it go? That little, that little, there's a song which says, little in the hands of God is what? Little is much with God, isn't it? Little is much with God. And it also comes when we, are, we face an overwhelming situation. Moses has just been called. Moses has been called. What is the call for Moses? Moses has been called to go and deliver the children of Israel. Oh, children of Israel, from where? From the biggest or from the largest army of all people. Moses, okay, Lord, I tried to do it on my own when I was 40 years old. And now I'm what? Now I'm 80 now. Now you are telling me this is the time for me to go. Okay, I, I heard some people who say they are 80 and they are old. Okay, okay, okay. That's the way, way when you should start, Brother St. Louis. Yes, Nana. Yes, Brother Cook, you, you, you are talking, you are telling us about you are retiring. There's no retirement in this job. This is when you start now. Moses is told, I am going to send you, Moses. And he's feeling so inadequate. He looks at his speech. He can't even uh, 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 string a sentence together without stammering. And he says, I can't even talk. That's exactly where God wants us. When we feel inadequate. Such that when he comes through for us, we will know it's not because of my ability, but it's just because God has brought me here. I therefore say that it is okay to feel inadequate. It is okay to feel inadequate, but our inadequacy should not paralyze us. It is okay to feel that this is big, because it is, but that should not paralyze us. Let's look quickly at what happens when we use what we have. Okay, tell me something about this story. We know this story. Children, tell me about what is on the screen now. Yes, Eli <laughs> now I was going to say Eliana. Isaiah, go on. David and Goliath. Tai. Yes, what happened? David and Goliath. Go on. Wow. David beat Goliath. All right. David was a small boy, wasn't he? Okay, you find the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17. David was a small boy. And how many stones did he have? Five stones. And, uh, and how many did he use? He just used one. Small boy with five stones against the, a giant. And that boy, okay, uh, King Saul tried to say, you know what, I think you may need a bit of armor, you know. And then he tried, he tried that armor and he said, oh, no, this one I'm not used to this. <laughs> I'm used to my, to, my, to, to my thing. I'm used to, the, to my what? To my sling. I'm used to my stones. And he did that. Women, myself, we, we, we managed to, to walk on that, on that valley there, the valley of Ella, when we visited there. And we picked up our own five stones. And we brought them. We may have got hey, five stones. I've got my five. Don't play with me. <laughs> I've got my five. And I'm going to use only none if you are good to me. But <laughs> so in other words, this, this little boy, this little boy is such that uh, Goliath says, Oh, you are sending me this. Am I a dog here? He's the one who knocked him down with just... One stone. Samson, we know the guy, isn't it? With a jaw of a donkey. Uh, and uh, this is found in uh, Judges chapter 15, verses 13 to 16. Okay, how many did he kill Philistines? A thousand of them that he killed. I want to talk a little bit about this guy here. This guy, he had, he, mom had prepared lunch for this guy, pig lunch. You know your, your pig lunch? And 
He's going, okay, there's a crowd, he's following the crowd. Oh, there's, there's this guy called Jesus, he's there as well. And Jesus, uh, in John chapter 6, verse 5, it says here, when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? The Bible says he asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, it would take more than half a year's wage to buy enough bread to feed each of the, uh, to, to, for each of these to have a bite, just a bite. Another of the disciples, Andrew, Simon uh, Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish, but how far will they go among so many? Wow. In other words, this young boy, he brought what he had. When they were saying, do you have any food? And they said, oh, yeah, I, I've, got, I've got something here. I've got my lunch. And he brought that lunch. And you know what? The God wants to use what we have, not what we don't have. And we know that 5,000 men only were fed from that little lunch. And sometimes when you look at it and say, oh, do you, do you think that would happen? We underestimate the power of God. We underestimate the God that we worship. He's the one who turned the Red Sea into solid ground so that the children of Israel can, can, can walk through. He's the one that went around the, the walls of Jericho and the walls collapsed without anything, without anyone fighting anything, but with just God doing his thing. My brothers and sisters, what do we learn from these stories? I want to, to say from this boy, I just learned that I need to bring what I have to the Lord. And what he does with that is none of my business. You, you know, when Jesus did his thing and people were told to sit down on the grass and then they were given, what happened? They ate and they, they were full. And then 12 baskets. Okay, I was wondering, okay, my imagination, sometimes you need to imagine. Where did those 12 baskets go? I can imagine now, mom looking and saying, oh, okay, there are three men carry, uh, there, are, there, are, there are some 12 men coming now, carrying some baskets. What's happening? And then the son is in front directing them, and they bring those 12 baskets home. Okay, this is my, my, my fatal imagination, okay? Th then they are bringing those baskets home. The boy went, went with five loaves and is coming back with what? Twelve baskets. And mom is saying, oh, okay, so what are we going? Where, where did you get this? Oh, there's a man there, you know. He, he did something to my lunch and this is what is the, uh, these are the remains. Are you saying these are the remains? Yes, uh, actually there are a lot of people. Mom, I can't count, but they were saying thousands and thousands of people have been fed. This is what God can do to you. If you give the little that you have. Let's quickly go on. So what we are saying here, God wants us to use what we have in our hands so that we can save others. Look always for opportunities to save other than to be waited on. If there is any trash to be picked up, please go ahead and do it. Across there will be having lunch. There are going to be dishes that will need to be what? To be washed. Please do it if you can do it. There are chairs that need to be arranged, tables that need to be set out. We are just saying that whatever you can do, don't complain that others are not doing it. If you can do it, go ahead and do it. I know, okay, let's say Nana. Nana cannot carry a, a table, can she? Not anymore, but she used to. That's okay. But if you can carry a table, do something about it. Not to say, oh, what are people doing here? Hey, what are... Sometimes the stuff that we find here after church in here for the cleaners that they find here, okay, it makes, it makes everything so bad, you know. Okay, chewing gum is left here. Bottles are left here. Uh, tissues, everything is left here. Sometimes, sometimes they text on the BMC to say, oh, the stuff that we are finding here. So what I'm just saying is, it's simple, isn't it? Whatever you brought Take away with, uh, <laughs> take it home with you, wherever it came from. Because when we got here, it was clean. So we want to uh, the same as we live. Are, are we still friends? 
all good. Sorry? Okay. <laughs> yes. So the question still remains, what do you have in my hand? You may feel that what you have in your hand is not enough, but that's exactly what God wants. He wants to use what you have already in your hands. God did not ask what you didn't have. We could make a long list of what we don't have. Who could say, I don't have enough money? Who could say, I don't have a good education? My social standing is not high enough. Oh, I, I don't have a big house. Oh, I, I don't have a big car. But God is never asking you about what you don't have. He's asking you about what you have. Have you ever come across these two scenarios? The young are saying, oh, no, we are too young to, to, to work for God. Oh, come with me to 2 Kings chapter 5. We know that the Bible tells us from verse 1, now Naaman was a commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a, a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. In another version, it says, but he was a leper. Now the bands of the raiders from Aram had gone out and taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she saved Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my master would see the prophet in Samaria, he will kill him from his leprous. Oh, my, my friends, my, I, I'm just excited about this girl. This girl is a slave. She's a slave in a foreign land, and she's there a young girl. And there's this man, the man of the house that they are saving. He's a big guy. He's next to the king. It says that he was the commander of the army of king. And he was a great man. In the sight of what? Of his master. And he was highly regarded. This was a big shot of guy. But the Bible says he had leprosy. This girl was not faced by the reputation or by the high status of this guy. She saw beyond his status. She saw that this guy need help, need healing. And she knew where that help happened. Oh, you know, this is where I, I get a little bit excited. Because how did she know that there was a prophet in their land? From the stories that Wim and everyone else has been telling us. The children were taught. You know, we we're asking about Goliath, isn't it? David and Goliath. And Ty and um, uh, Isaiah came up with that. They knew because they are taught at home. We studied today, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. And the Lord is saying that you should tell this, be diligent in teaching your children. Where? At home. While they are sitting, while they are lying, while they are moving, teach to the children. My brothers and sisters, May I remind you that these type of stories, these type of knowledge do not come on Netflix. They are not from Facebook. You can't find them on, on Instagram, but you can just find them from the word of God. So parents, be diligent. Tell your children whilst they are lying down. Let them see the Lord's goodness. This spoken and written word should ring always in our homes. And then there are my brothers and sisters who say we are too old. Yes. May I say that uh, this army, as I mentioned earlier, that you have joined, you don't retire. I was telling Brother Koch last week to say, actually, retirement is saying you are having new tires. Retire. New, retire. So it's new tires so that you can work. You know, this church, we've been blessed in this church by giants who have done their work. Yes, Nana's, uh, Brother St. Louis, Brother Cox, Brother Harris who is in hospital, Sister Connie, Sister Connie Jeffers, uh, uh, yes, all these, uh, Sister, Sister Adeline, they were once the deaconesses and the deacons and first elders of this church. But what I know is, when it comes to the work of God, you don't retire until you have blessed, breathed your last. The only time you can retire is when you are lying there. And we are saying we can view you. Then we say, yes, there's a, there's a retired soldier there. But before that happens, my brothers and sisters, we can change roles. 
We can change roles because we have got the energized ones. Yeah, we have got the, the Alex ones, isn't it, coming up. The energized ones with energy. Yes, they've got that. But he, he doesn't have something that you have, Brother St. Louis. You've got the experience. And you cannot, you cannot just sit, uh, sit down. Nana is always there. Oh, I love Nana. Nana with their hospitality. Nana even there. She's looking at me. Have you seen that visitor? Have you? <laughs> eh? Eh? Herself, she can't even go to the visitor, but she's just saying. <laughs> so she's talking to me. That's why I keep on looking there. Because I, I know that I get some wisdom to say, Jabu, have you looked at that? If you, so in other words, I'm saying, as far as the God's work is concerned, everyone in here has got something to do. You might not be doing it fast enough. You might not be doing it as uh, the heavy lifting. Leave the heavy lifting to Risa and his team. But be there to, to promote. Be there to support them. Be there to pray for them. You know, be there to be there for them. Saying, yes, indeed, go on. That's the way to go. And even advising. Say, eh. Hey, Yes, Brother St. Louis, you remember what you used to do with me? Yes, I want you to continue doing that with Brother Risai and all the other elders. You would call me aside and say, oh, Brother Jabu, oh, yes, why don't you do it this way? Oh, Brother Jabu, yes. I remember, I remember, I remember one conversation. Okay, this just come to my mind. Brother St. Louis came and said, Brother Jabu, we are struggling here. And we need something are you not able to do something? And I said, Brother St. Louis, I can't. And they said, yes, you can. No, Brother St. Louis, I can't do this. Yes, you can. Okay, I will, I will finish that story on another time. But what I'm just saying is, our senior members, don't retire. Be there to support. If I may just say, don't also criticize. Support. Okay? Those who have been watching football, have you seen Messi? Okay, you, you, you know that the one is in, the, uh, Argentina won the World Cup, yeah. Oh no, okay, there's no yeah there. Okay, Argentina, Argentina won. Okay, so when you look at uh, that football match, when you were watching Argentina play, did you see something about Messi? Messi was walking most of the time. Yes, he would just be walking. Everyone else around him is running, but he's what? He's walking. But as soon as he gets the ball, then everything else changes. When you compare Messi of 2022 and compare with Messi of, of uh, 10, 10 years ago, they are so different. He knew what his position now was. He could not run as fast as he used to, but he knew that he could conserve his energy. As soon as he gets the ball, then he can do something about it. So my brothers, Uncle Seal, you might not be doing what you used to do, but conserve your energy. When it's needed, know when to use it. We need that energy. We need that wisdom. Because this year, the Lord is going to do something for us, and he will continue to do it. Not because of anything that we have done, but because we have dedicated what we have in his hands. As we said, we normally have the tendency to, uh, to underestimate what we have. I believe that many of God's people have been defeated in life because they have allowed the enemy to cause them to despise their gift. It's not good enough. Oh, my talent is not good enough. You want to compare yourself with others. God is not saying, what does Jabu have? No, what do you have? Like the servant who went out and buried his one talent. Many have buried their talents because it seems so weak. So small and so insignificant. But I would just want to say, come up. Let us dig up that hidden talent and put it to the master's hands. And we'll just be amazed when we look at how God can do it. I think you have seen me. I've, I've, I've been coming here so many times. And at every opportunity, I've shared my experience with how the Lord has led. I, I'm one of those, I think, who as soon as I get a microphone, I, I, I say something. So, so my, my stories, you already know them. But I just want to, to share briefly to say the, how the Lord has blessed my efforts, feeble efforts on the podcast. You know, I've got these ones, the headphones. This is what I had. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, these headphones, actually, I didn't buy them. 
but uh, okay, my employer bought them. So, so uh, Monday to Friday, I use them at work, and then. Okay, I hope you are not recording that, you know. Okay, and then I have got my my mobile phone, and I've got my the word of God. That's all. And the Lord has just blessed that work. Feeble is it, maybe. And it's gone to places. I've shared with you that uh, people have come. I shared with a, with a sister who was in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Zambia. She received it, and uh, two hours later, she rang me from Zambia, all the way from Zambia. Elder Jabu, I've just shared it with 154 people on my list. And they are saying they want the next one. When is it coming? This month, this podcast is being played on the Lancashire Lighthouse radio station. Okay, on the radio now. Feeble effort. And for those who know me, they know that I've got a stammer. Those who knew me when I was growing up, they, they know that I had a serious stammer. That uh, as soon as people... As I start talking, that my sisters would just say, "Clear," because I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. I'll be eh, 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 eh. But you know, just give the Lord what you have, and the Lord will do the rest. I'm almost timed out now. Let me just quickly go. How do you serve? How do you serve? Okay. Oh, by the way, for those who need something about the podcast, it's called Jabu Talks podcast is available on Spotify and a, a, a little bit of commercial, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit of commercial. It's available on Spotify and on uh, Google Podcasts. So Jabu Talks, J-A-B-U and Talks. Okay, so we've got two series now uh, that are happening. By the way, talk about that. Next week, uh, this coming Tuesday, we are doing episode seven. Yes, I think it needs special prayers from all of you. So we just pray that the Lord will be, will be, will be with us uh, as we share that. It's a difficult topic, but we pray that the Lord will be with us. What's happening here is uh, that guy there was a frequent traveler on one of the regular flights. Okay, you can see as you read. I don't know whether you can read that close enough. But um, one day he walked in and he, he saw that the fl flight attendants were all enthusiastic. They were all excited engaged and they were considerate they were oh you know they were they were they were they were just eventually yes as he sat down he asked one of the flight attendants to say oh okay it looks like everyone is very enthusiastic today what's there and then this lady bent forward and said you see you see that lady there the one that i've circled in in yellow that woman sitting in seat number 24, she's the head supervisor of the flight attendants <laughs> for our flights. So everyone was enthusiastic because the supervisor was on the flight. So the question is, can we please save knowing that Jesus is on our flight? So in other words, I'm saying, let us have all the enthusiasms in 2023. You cannot just say, oh, no, uh, this, this uh, yes, in Shona we call it zinyenge nyeke, zinyenge nyeke, that we are just loose, loose, whatever goes. In 2023, let us do something for the Lord. Let us venture out. For you, it might not be a podcast, but there's something that you can do. You remember I shared the story about that, uh, that lady, isn't it, who prayed for some people for seven years. You remember that story? Uh, no, you don't. Okay, so she... This lady went on. Uh, she said, okay, uh, elder there at church was talking about so many things that we should do something for God. We should do everything. But now, you know what? I can't even go out. I can't even walk. I can't drive. I can't preach. I can't talk. I can't do this. But I can pray. And then she, she said, okay, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to pray. Whom are you going to pray, sister? I don't know. But you know what? I know where to find names of people that I can pray for. She went onto a telephone directory. And from there, she picked 14 names that she was praying for. 14 names that she was praying every day for seven years. Then one day, there was a baptism at church. 
and then uh, the, uh, as the people are, are being introduced, this lady hears that one of the person being baptized and said, I know this guy. She went up to this uh, guy as he was just being uh, introduced and said, I know you. The guy looked at her and said, mm, no, I don't think we've met mom. I know you. What is your name? Yes, I know you and I've been praying for you. How do you know me? I've been praying for you. For seven years, he has been praying for these people. Now, the uh, Adventist World Radio president was at this meeting. And then he said, my sister, come. What are you saying? She said, I've been praying for 14 people for seven years. And then the president says, come, let us look at your list. She looked, uh, they looked at the list of the 14. They realized that seven of those people had been baptized in different churches around that town. So I'm saying, you cannot say that I can't do anything. We have got educated people here. Nadia, thank you very much for accepting to be our church clerk for 2023. We want young blood, and the Lord is going to use you, my, my, my girl. Yes, you are going to do it for the Lord. Yes, as I was saying, our senior members, we want you, nanas, we want you, because we know that you are praying for us every time. We want the young ones, those who are feeling th that energy. We want to save as if Jesus is on this flight because he is definitely on this flight. And that with Jesus, Professor, we can smile at the storm. You know what, my brothers and sisters, storms are going to come our way, but we can smile at them because Jesus is with us. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7, the Bible says here, save wholeheartedly as you are saving the word, the Lord and not people. So when you are working in this church, when you are working as a soldier in this army, don't wait for people to thank you. You are expecting our thanks? They will be talking bad about you. Yes, why? Because it's not their job, it's not their, it's not their work, it's God's work, this one. And God is the only one who is going to give you a reward. Yes, and your reward is not here. Hey, oh, uh, I preached and no one came back to say, hey, I sang and no one. Whom do you think these people are? They are not God. You are singing to God, you are worshiping God. And let us leave everything to God. And God is going to bless you. Just venture out knowing that you are not saving people. Uh, let me emphasize, you are not saving people, but you are saving God. And as you are saving God, give your best, my brothers and sisters. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Oh, I don't know what else I can say, but what I'm just saying, 2023, let us do something for the Lord. Say, I will go. You don't know yet how you are going to go, but you are going to surrender what you have, you've got, what God has given to you. And it says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10, it says, whatever your hands find to do, do with all your might. For in the realm of the dead where you are going, there is neither working, no planning, no knowledge, no wisdom. You know what? What uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon is just reminding us, we are going somewhere, and where we are going is called death. We won't do anything about it. This is my time. This is what I'm going to do. Therefore, as we come to the end, we are going to say, yes, total member involvement. Reach my world. There's your world that I cannot reach. There's only some people that you only can reach. I remember I was struggling quite a lot even to reach my work colleagues. But I thank God. Okay. I thank God. Okay. I, I'm saying thank God for COVID. Because COVID opened many things for me. Yes, as I was sharing with you, when we got COVID, we, 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 me and Wim were, we, we were one of the first ones, you know, to get COVID before there was all this treatment, all these vaccines. It was raw still then, that it was only one way in. And when the ambulance we, came for Wim to take her to the hospital, I, I cried. Norms and Tim, they were on the phone because we had just called on, on Zoom, saying, Dad, it's okay, Dad. She will be okay. Crying. And Wim is going. And that's where the Lord opened doors for me. At my workplace, they say, oh, Jabu, you are the first one in our, uh, that we know here that has caught COVID. Can you share with us what, what the experience was? <laughs> no one tells you what to put in your testimony, do they? They say, we don't talk God here, but I talked about God there. In my testimony. So I told my team, oh, you know what? I've got this wonderful church. Yes, yes. There was some, 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 some Indian curry being delivered to the door. 
there was Nchima, there was Sadza, there was everything coming to our door every day. And I was telling my work colleagues, oh yeah, you know what, I told these people that, okay, unfortunately, appetite, we don't have a good appetite, but we're coming back to you after we are okay and ask for that meal again to say, repeat, repeat all the meals. So I was telling them that this was just a team of about eight, nine people. And then two months later, they say, my manager says, you know the story that you shared with us together? Would you like to share to the whole directorate? Directorate? Yes, of course. I, I, I've got my story. I shared it to the whole directorate. Oh, and they were saying, oh, Wim, you are special. Oh, this. Oh, we are all crying. Our eyes are all wet here. Yeah. I'm sharing the story just because of that. And then, uh, yes, when I was leaving now, uh, okay, we're going to Zimbabwe in September. So I said, okay, by the way, guys, I'll, I'll be away for three weeks. So, okay, uh, unfortunately, where we're going there, no communication. So we'll see you when you get back. But if you miss my voice, I've got a podcast now. They said, what? I've got a podcast. So it's available on Spotify and Google Podcasts. When I got back, one of the guys says, I've been listening to all three takeaways, you know, three takeaways on, on, on each of the podcasts. So I'm just saying, I've just been using what I have. Yes, I'm not, I'm not eloquent, I know, but I've got a passion for God's work. And, and I, I just want all of us here to be just passionate, to be excited about this thing. You know what, this world is going to an end. And, uh, but sometimes we are, we, we, we are just comfortable, too comfortable to, 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 to where we are. Okay, let us finish this thing now. And uh, let us call for prayer. And how are we praying? We are going to ask for that we want to commit what we have into God's hands. God is going to use it. I don't know about you. When I started 22, I didn't even know that it would reach to where it is. I know we've had challenges. I know we've had deaths even in the family. We've had the bereavements and all these other things. But you know, when you read God's word, there's something that God says. Okay, I'm looking for a verse that I have here. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, which says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. Who would like to say, Lord, I know you are able to do exceedingly what we can imagine. We are going to have great stuff in Preston Church if we just dedicate what we have. You know, you may say that, no, me, I can't even do this. Can you cook? Go ahead and cook. Yes, there are certain people that didn't know that I, I bake scones. I bake scones. I take scones to my neighbors, to my friends. Are you, have you received scones from me yet? Oh, don't worry, you are on the list. Don't worry, you are on the list of my friends. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, yes, Nana has received them. You can see. Brother St. Louis, I think you've received them as well. Yes, uh, some scones. Yeah, now, now he's even forgotten. So I think he needs another, another delivery. <laughs> so what I'm just saying is, remember that little girl? She just knew about a, a, a prophet in Samaria. Yes, we, we know we've got stories of how people have just used what they have to further God's work. So we are just saying, God, I don't even know. Maybe I can't even take an inventory of what I have, but I'm just giving it to you. Okay, it, it may be appear so weak, so useless, but Lord, just use it. You know that widow. We've got a small jar of olive oil there, but that jar paid up all the debt and they lived off it because God had entered. God is saying, I'm in the business of saving people. We are, our closing song is Rescue the Perishing. And we are saying, God, we want to surrender. Is there anyone who is saying, Lord, I, I want to give what I have? I, I might not, not even know what I have, but I just want to give it as it is. Please, I want to give it as it is. Please stand as...